Why does a cowboy wear tough blue jeans and a rough woolen shirt? Why does a deep sea diver wear a heavy watertight helmet? And why do firemen wear heavy rubber boots and heavy rubber coats? Most of us are not deep sea divers or firemen or cowboys. But whoever we are or whatever our work, we all wear clothing of one kind or another. Our clothing must protect us from the hot sun and the summer heat. Light colored and lightweight clothing is much more comfortable on hot days than dark colored heavy garments. But there are days when we do need this kind of clothing, when we need protection from the winter cold and from snow. On other days and in other seasons, we need protection from the rain. It's the same the whole world over and with all the world's many peoples. Out across the blue Pacific Ocean, thousands of miles away, are the Fiji Islands. Nature is very kind to the Fiji Islanders. Their clothing needs are simple. There is warm, pleasant sunshine the year round, and the Islanders live an outdoor life most of the time. Nature is kind to these people of the Pacific, but it's a different story in the frozen Northland. Here, way up near the North Pole, the Eskimos live. Eskimos need heavy, warm clothing most of the year. They wear mostly the skins and furs of animals. In temperatures which go way below zero, Eskimo children are warm and comfortable as they play in the snow. But in a different part of the world, in the desert lands of Africa, the weather is hot and dry. People who live here wear long robes of cotton and wool. These protect them from the hot sun and the desert wind. People in other lands wear clothing very different from ours. An Eskimo in his fur clothing would seem very much out of place in this group. So with a Fiji Islander. But does this mean that our clothing is better? Who is more comfortable in hot, sticky weather? This man in his business suit wearing a tight collar and tie? Or the Fiji Islanders? Who is warmer out of doors on a bitterly cold day? This man who lives in Chicago, Illinois, or the Eskimo who lives in a far colder climate? The people of other lands have taught us a good deal about clothing. This big straw hat, called a sombrero, comes from Mexico, our nearest neighbor to the south. And where have you seen cloth as bright and colorful as this beach jacket? This is very delicate needlework, done skillfully and colorfully by a young Arabian girl. People of other lands often have a wonderful feeling for design and for color. We can learn from them and they can learn from us. Let's go back to pioneer days, back to the early days of the American frontier. Every pioneer probably missed a shot now and again. And lurking behind every tree, there may have been Indians. But not all of them were enemies. In fact, 
From the Indian, the pioneer learned to make clothing. Clothing of buckskin, the smooth, beautiful skin of the deer. The woodland Indian had worn buckskin for centuries before the coming of the white man. It was good clothing for life in the wilderness. Woolen cloth is made from the thick fleece of sheep. To the pioneer women and girls, woolen cloth seemed better than buckskin. But the rough wool had to be combed out bit by bit by hand. It had to be spun into yarn on a spinning wheel. And then, after it was dyed, it had to be woven into cloth on a hand loom, slowly, a bit at a time. In pioneer days, it often took a woman weeks to make enough cloth for a simple dress. The cloth was often beautiful, but the work was slow and hard. But today, most of the work of weaving cloth is done by machines, which need few workers to tend them. And by freight, train, and truck, from distant points of our own country, and by ship from other countries of the world, come the materials which go into our clothing. From the far west comes the wool from great herds of sheep. From the croplands of the southern and southwestern states, we get cotton to make cloth. And from the green forest comes material for our clothing. Chemists in their laboratories have learned to make cloth from wood pulp. It is called rayon and nylon is made mostly from coal. But let's see how much work goes into just one item of clothing, a pair of leather shoes. Leather is made from the skins or hides of animals. After the hides are soaked in a strong liquid, a process known as tanning, they must be dried. These men who work with leather are called tanners. After the drying process, the hides are ready to be colored. We can have leather of any color we wish. Tanning, drying, coloring, the work of many skilled men and machines. The final polishing is done on a machine that gives the leather a beautiful luster. We depend on the work done by these tanners who make finished leather out of rough hides. We depend on the man who stitches our shoes on another kind of machine, and on the man who makes sure that our shoes fit us properly, who sees that they are not too tight or too loose. Much hard work and skill goes into making our shoes and all of our clothing. For this reason, it's a good idea to take care of clothes. Shoes need to be polished now and then. The polish makes them look better and wear longer. Dresses keep their shape best if they are put on hangers. Blue jeans and an old sweater are better to play baseball in than a blue serge suit. It's not difficult to learn to sew, to mend holes and tears so that they don't become larger. The materials for our clothing come from every part of the country. It takes the work of many skilled hands and many machines to produce our clothing. We have learned much about clothing, about materials, styles, new ideas, from the people of other lands. In clothing and in many other things, we depend on and learn from other people. And they learn from us.